Mr. Ari, so how many do you want? One or two? Two. Two. <laughs> All righty. Grab the sauce for mum. Life might look calm for 47-year-old single mum Rosie Sorofska and her six-year-old son Ari, but Rosie says looks can be deceiving. It's an extreme juggle <laughs> to, to be, you know, working um, as well as looking after a young son. Number two, hot dog is ready. Rosie works part-time and earns between sixty and $70,000 a year. She says an extra $1,000 in her tax refund would make a big difference. So pretty much everything I do revolves around money. So the, all the decisions that I make for the household are always going to be revolving around money. So yeah, even um, looking at you know saving um, to go away um, for a break with my son, you know it's always you know I've got to do something extra to get a little bit of extra money. The first stage of the government's tax plan will put more than a thousand dollars in the okay. pockets of people like Rosie who earn less than ninety thousand dollars a year. Whoa! The pressure's Thanks. always on, so it would be a huge relief to have a bit of tax, to have a bit of a tax break. It just means a bit of extra money in my pocket, really, um, to be able to do some of the things that I've been putting off for a long time, and or just adding it to to help establish a bit more um, of my business, to help clear out some debts. Of course, they're always <laughs> around. Former RBA board member Warwick McKibben says the tax cuts could help to stimulate a sputtering economy at a welcome time given the worrying state of the global backdrop. It's about $14 billion over four years. That's about um, a percent of GDP uh, divided by four is about a quarter of a percent of GDP. So that's extra spending in the economy if it's spent of, of enough to, to keep the economy uh, chugging along. There's bipartisan support for this year's tax cuts. The third stage of the government's plan is more controversial, locking in big tax cuts for higher income earners to start in 2024. It's a plan that actually deals with the immediate challenges as well as the longer term challenges. We're getting rid of bracket creep. Bracket creep is a, is, is a thief. The government is eliminating an entire tax bracket. This means people earning between $45,000 a year and $200,000 a year will be paying the same marginal tax rate, 30 cents in the dollar. Under the new tax scales, people earning $200,000 or more will see their tax cut by $11,640 per year. People like barrister Kate Cuthbertson. I'm not sure it will make an enormous amount of difference to me. It would make a bigger difference to someone on a lower income, I'd think. but. Um... No doubt, it's, you know, I can make use of it. Treasury estimates the stage three cuts will cost $16 billion a year. Kate Cuthbertson believes the money could be better spent. I've got a lot of members of my family that have been in more difficult situations than I am. I'm certainly a very fortunate member of my family to have um, been able to earn a decent income. According to the Grattan Institute, flattening the tax structure will mean the top 15% will pay a lower share of their income in tax than they do now, while middle income earners will pay a higher share. Professor Miranda Stewart from the University of Melbourne agrees it's a regressive move. It reduces the tax owed by top income earners more than it reduces the tax owed for bottom income earners. So what that means is more of the benefit goes to the top than the bottom. It's also hard to see the efficiency gains uh, of this uh, tax cut. At the top, most high income earners are already working or investing or running businesses uh, to achieve that level of income. This tax cut's not really going to change that behaviour. There are also fears locking in major tax cuts five years ahead of time while maintaining a surplus could require major government spending cuts. The stage three has to be financed either by an increase in revenues from some source or by a reduction in spending. My understanding is that um, the most likely scenario would be a reduction in spending. I can see a potential argument for fiscal stimulus, in which case you would think a tax cut should be delivered now rather than uh, announcing something now but not putting any money in, in those people's pockets for five years' time. Laura Henning and her partner Chris Homsch are both unemployed. She's on parenting payment and he's on Newstart, training to be a carpenter. Neither of them will be receiving any extra cash under the government's plan. If you've 
had a steady job for a long time and you've always been able to meet your basic needs, then no, I don't think that you really understand having to tell your kid that you can't buy new shoes because that means we can't buy groceries. Sorry. It's all those, it, it's just the little things. Having to juggle, even being able to go to a friend's house because you don't have the petrol to get there. New start for couples is set at $501 per person a fortnight. New start is extremely low. Uh, I think that's well understood in Australia. It's a, it's a very small amount of money. It's not really enough to live on. Uh, if that new start payment was increased, then obviously that would help uh, people looking for jobs or in uncertain economic uh, situations uh, to, to build their consumption a bit and uh, potentially to look for work more easily. Chris says some extra cash would make a big difference. Raising the base wage of benefits would definitely be helpful. A lot more helpful than a lump sum payment because yeah, yeah, it just means you've always got that little bit of extra cash coming in and it would tally up to more over the course of a year. Small fry during dark life. Kate Cuthbertson thinks tax cuts for people like her aren't fair and may not even stimulate the economy. $11,000 to someone with a $45,000 income would no doubt make a very big difference to the way in their consumption and the way they spend money. For someone like me, um, it might not have the sort of impact that the government hopes it will have. The Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, joins me now. Treasurer, just in the last half hour, you've got $158 billion of tax cuts through the parliament. That's obviously a major win for the government, but a lot of people will still want to know how the budget can afford it. Well, I think this is a major win for the Australian economy and a major win for Australian taxpayers because more than 10 million taxpayers uh, will get up to $1,080 in their pocket once they put in their next tax return. And the money will flow, Laura, from next week. We'll also see about $8 billion a year come into the economy as a result of the tax cuts, not just in this year's budget, but last year's uh, budget legislated $144 billion of tax cuts. And this move to provide tax relief to low and middle income earners has been welcomed by the Reserve Bank Governor, who said it will boost household consumption and therefore boost economic activity. Well, that's, uh, that's certainly true, but critics, uh, including the Grattan Institute, based on your budget papers, say that it looks like you're going to have to cut spending by $40 billion over the next few years to fund this and keep in surplus. And certainly the budget papers show a fall in government spending over the next few years. Can you just explain to viewers why that doesn't equate to deliberate spending cuts? Well, we're not pr uh, cutting spending. In fact, what we're seeing is spending on hospitals go up by 59% as a result of the five-year agreement that we've struck. We're seeing school funding going up by 62% per student. We're investing $100 billion in infrastructure, creating 80,000 new apprentices. What we're doing is growing the economy. So there are no cuts. What we are focused on is growing the economy. So you mentioned the first round of tax cuts delivering a stimulus. Uh, it's going to be equivalent to the one that Labor provided as in the first round of uh, responses to the GFC in 2009. What does that say about the state of the economy? Well, actually, the reason why we're providing these tax cuts is because of the values that underpin our policy. That's reward for effort, uh, encouraging aspiration, enabling Australians to earn more and to keep more of what they earn. That was the dividing line at the election that we've just had. Labor was promising $387 billion of higher taxes, and we were uh, telling the Australian people we would deliver the tax cuts. Now the Morrison government has delivered the tax cuts that the Australian people have voted for. We've done done that against the will of the Labor Party and the Labor Party have act acted against the will of the Australian people. But you've also said during the election campaign that the economy was in good shape. Uh, we've certainly got the slowest rate of economic growth since the GFC. How does that possibly tally with the government's rhetoric during the election campaign? Well, there's a couple of points here. Firstly, the economy does face challenges and the Prime Minister and myself, Matthias Cormann, we've all 
been upfront with that. We've had a severe drought and obviously floods that has seen farm GDP come back by 6.8% over the last year. Uh, we've seen a slowdown in the housing market from its previous highs. And then the global trade tensions between China and the US have weighed on the global economic outlook, all of which affects us here at home. But at the same time, the fundamentals of the Australian economy are sound. And we, we saw the Reserve Bank Governor just say a few days ago that employment growth is strong. Unemployment is at its lowest level in seven years. We saw more than 40,000 jobs being created last month. A record number of women and seniors are in the workforce and a record number of young Australians have got jobs over the last year. At the same time, we've got a AAA credit rating from the three leading credit rating agencies and we've got a budget that's coming back into surplus for the first time in more than a decade. But the Reserve so Bank Governor has also said that uh, you need to do more, that monetary policy alone isn't enough because the economy is weak and employment's not strong enough. What are you prepared to uh, countenance to, do, to fix that? Well, we certainly agree with the Reserve Bank Governor that monetary policy shouldn't be doing all the heavy lifting. That's why we set out in the budget the plan which involves not only tax cuts but also record infrastructure spending as well as the apprenticeships and we're, we've got a very ambitious trade agenda that the Prime Minister has been pursuing with Simon Birmingham. We've also uh, got a deregulation agenda as well as support for small business with a new securitisation fund and a whole series of other measures. So we believe that fiscal policy and uh, should be working together with monetary policy to create jobs. That's what we're keen to do. But let's not forget, Laura, Australia is in its 28th consecutive year of economic growth. We shouldn't talk down the economy. We should be realistic about the challenges it faces. But we also have a plan to get us through. There's been a widespread plea to lift New Start, and uh, that's been boosted by the case that it would help economic activity. Why not do that? The Reserve Bank has endorsed that idea. Have you, as Treasurer, received that same advice from Treasury that you should actually do something about New Start as an economic stimulus measure? Well, we have said that we're not changing New Start, and the reason why is New Start uh, recipients, 99% of whom, uh, receive other benefits. So it might be a parenting benefit or another benefit. The other thing about New Start is two thirds of the people on New Start move on to a job within 12 months. And what we are focused on is creating the environment in the economy to create more than 1.3 million new jobs. Uh, workforce participation rates are now at a record high and we are creating jobs with our policies which is enabling people to get off New Start, which is of course the best outcome for them but also the best outcome for the economy. The government has angered older people by not doing anything about the deeming rate, uh, particularly since the last interest rate cut. Are you going to do something about this? Well, we are going to have a very serious look at this through our expenditure review committee process, and we'll do that very shortly. Uh, the last time the deeming rates were changed was in March 2015. There's a lower deeming rate and a higher deeming rate. Uh, and let's not forget, it affects about one in four uh, of the age pensioners. So it doesn't affect every one of them, uh, but it also it's, it's assessed on financial assets, not just bank deposits. So you also need Need to bear in mind that whether it's managed funds or shareholdings, the returns can be greater than they are when you've got money in the bank. But we are very seized of this issue. We think it's a serious one and we'll have a very close look at it very shortly. Well, finally, Treasurer, the tax cuts package was the centrepiece of your economic policy. What are you going to do for the rest of the term? Are you going to do, be doing things that you didn't spell out to voters during the election <laughs> campaign? Well, I know in my own portfolio, I'm going to be busy now legislating the consumer data right, which will enable uh, Australians to share their data to get better deals on their energy bill or on their telephone bills or with their banking services. Um, we're also focusing on our drought relief fund and legislating that. Uh, there's a whole series of other things that we are focused on in the Treasury portfolio and across government. Thanks for your time tonight, Treasurer. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.